visual consumption of food as conveying practical consumption, familial status, and political statement can either be literal or figurative. The facets of food consumption as it relates to class visually exemplifies to the viewer how it holds up the country as it relates to the ruling elite. The display of food in portraiture signifies a heightened social status. It can be used to compare the current administration and previous ones to their obsession with overconsumption. And the masses use the images of big business and branding to comment on the current political situation. It is with these artistic tools that we critique our society. Public displays of foodstuffs serve as monetary and nutritional sustenance for the country because corn and tobacco were huge cash crops for the country. The pieces of sculpture by Benjamin Henry Latrobe and act as figurative and monetary consumption for the ruling elite as a visual desert of class and culture as literal pillars of productivity. This is even more relevant now because corn is the largest, most lucrative crop grown in America and it dominates the world food industry as we saw in the documentary King Corn. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the painting by William Michael Harnett is a literal consumption of bunny for the less wealthy masses for actual nutritional sustenance. Though, it is also a figurative consumption for the ruling elite because they did not have time to go hunting, so the affluent were forced to live vicariously through the image. In portraiture of this era, fresh fruit serves as a subtle declaration of wealth and status. The painting of Elizabeth Ezekiel by John Singleton Copley uses the blatant display of fresh fruit to flaunt the fact that she has the time and the land to use her leisure time to garden. It also suggests that Mrs. Ezekiel has superior maternal skills that she refined with the rearing of her 13 children, and now uses to care for the many plants in her spacious garden. Joseph Blackburn's image of Isaac Winslow and his family shows the world that they are able to bask in the visual and tactile pleasures of silken fabrics and ripened fruit. The peaches in the daughter's apron suggest that she has become ripe enough to be consumed by the society. Similarly, the picture of William Smith and his grandson by Charles Wilson Peel also uses the peach to communicate to the viewer that William Smith is so learned in the area of agriculture that it propels him into the stratosphere of society. It is with these images that we are able to obtain a more intimate profile of the ruling elite that control everything that we hold dear. Government's constant overconsumption is the same as it was almost 200 years ago, as demonstrated by these works of art. The images of Balthazar's Feast in 1742 compared to Welcome Home by Jack Levine in 1946 both comment on the obliviousness of the government and to the impending plateau of society because the officials are too involved with the decadence of their meal. In Balthazar's Feast, the divine is trying to enlighten the court as to their overconsuming ways. The only one that really notices the divine presence among the lavish hubbub is Balthazar. At least he, as their leader, is somewhat aware that there is wrongdoing afoot. Unlike Balthazar, the garish, caricature-like subjects in Jack Levine's Welcome Home are completely ignorant to the impending doom of our society faces if we continue on our current path. The presence of several government officials side by side with the wealthy taking part so feverishly in the feast, this brings into question the legitimacy of our government as a true ruling system as the years progress or has it morphed into a big business. The forced hand of big business and branding compared to the former rural family farm, which, in today's society, government continues to dictate. Andy Warhol's installation of Campbell soup cans brings branding to the forefront of the brain. He confronts the American consumer with the fact that they are being brainwashed into proving their patriotism by purchasing specific labels. On a more grand scale, Agnes Dens also confronts the masses of consumers with Wheatfield, a confrontation, as a picturesque juxtaposition of the former rural way of life and the current industrial civilization. It stands to reason that a return to the pastoral state, as depicted in Thomas Cole's The Course of Empire, the Arcadian State, would be the most beneficial to our society. In an attempt to wean ourselves, off the instant satisfaction and or overconsumption.